Remember, O man, that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. The very idea of Ash Wednesday and the very idea of penance is something which is foreign to a culture that often exalts the idea of self-realization, the idea of progress, the idea that one can simply blaze their own path through life. But the biblical vision depicts a startling reality, that all of humanity lies in great need, that all of us, no matter how well intended, are incapable of climbing the mountain to look upon the living God face to face. And therefore, by necessity, that God must descend from his mountain, that he must meet us in the dust where he finds us, and he must raise us up with himself to peace, to shalom, or else we remain where we are. We remain in the dust. And that concept of grace emerging from humility is a concept so powerful that if it took root in our culture today, I passionately believe it would mean the death of this endless attempt to put down our neighbor because of a social or because of a political opinion. But instead we would see the man or woman beside us as being made in the image and likeness of God. If we took the spirit of humility with us, we would no longer see our brothers and sisters as the enemy but instead recognize, as Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, that we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of darkness and high places. If we recognize this humility, then truly our hearts would be opened to the call of the Holy Spirit. And the prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done would replace the my will be done mindset that we see warned about in texts such as the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis and of course by prophets such as G.K. Chesterton. Chesterton, a famous Christian author and convert to Roman Catholicism, once wrote a book called The Everlasting Man saying all of history winds its way toward the person of Jesus. The most famous Protestant in the history of 20th century apologetics, in my opinion, C.S. Lewis, a high church Anglican, was overwhelmed by the power of that book. And we see in his famous work, Mere Christianity, the same theme, that when we come to the person of Jesus, we are coming to the culmination of history. Emmanuel, God with us, or as a famous hymn puts it, the Lord or God in flesh made manifest. Now, why is this significant to us with penance? Because from a Christian point of view, at least specifically in a Lutheran point of view of looking at the whole of Christian history, we would accent the fact that when we are humbling ourselves, we are not acknowledging at all that by refusing to eat food or by praying uh, on one's own prayer beads, that one could ever ascend that mountain through these merits. But instead, it is the free gift, the free gift of God's grace which enables us to respond with love towards God by indicating our need for Him. 
This is something which I truly believe the Western Church of Rome has recognized in light of the Second Ecumenical Vatican Council, even if we might offer some critiques of Trent. But what is plain to us is that God has lifted us up. We simply recognize our continual need for him in light of our own wounded nature because of the fall by bearing with us these signs, these ashes of true metanoia, of true repentance. God is the one who is descended from on high. God is the one who has unveiled himself. That we might recognize ourselves like Esther who wore ashes on her own head in Esther chapter 14 as yes, royal children, but royal children who are in need of our Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.